Hello. Today I want to have a look at an old DVD player. Uh, it's a Samsung model number DVD HR730. Uh, it's a DVD recorder and according to the sticker it's got a hard drive as well. Um, and it can play back various formats uh, including DivX uh, other than that I mean it's not really anything special it's just an old old DVD player uh, got some extra inputs here um, P scan I think yeah I think it's actually got a tuner built in as well so we look at the back here uh, we can see we only got component video out, we got S video, we got composite video, and we got audio, and we got digital uh, audio out. And unfortunately, it's got a fan as well. Um, hope it's not noisy. Uh, but anyway, let's see if we can get it to work. Okay, I got the power plugged in, and try to switch it on. Nothing happens. Um, we're gonna have to open it up and see what's going on. Uh, might not be repairable, but hey, let's give it a go. Okay, so I took the lid off here, and it even comes with a DVD, I think. Return of the King Special Edition. Oh, that's nice. Um, so I think the first thing to check is the power supply over here. Ah, uh, it's clearly switch mode power supply and then we probably have some I don't know if they're rectifiers or they're regulators, transistors but uh, probably various different voltages on the secondary sign here so I found the service manual and the schematic for the power supplies here so you can see we've got the mains coming in here going through a bit of filtering uh, we have our primary side capacitor here, we have our switch mode uh, controller here and a MOSFET here and it's, it looks very very simple. Uh, I had a quick look at the data sheet for this uh, switch mode power supply controller. Um, so what happens here is that it's got these three resistors here. Um, it's prov providing the start, so they're going to be charging up this capacitor here. And from what I can see from the data sheet, it needs about 8.5 volts before it will start. And it will operate uh, from voltages between 8.5 volts up to about uh, 16.5 volts. I think after that, it starts shutting down. Um, so I think that will be the first thing to check. Um, does this switch mode controller IC actually get the voltages and does it start switching uh, is anything going on here so I'll just get a multimeter and we can try and check that okay got a multimeter here and I think I found the measurement points um, so I think this will be the ground because we have to be a bit careful we are on the uh, the live side of the circuit here. Okay, and if we measure on this resistor here, uh, we only get about five volts, so that's not enough to start. Uh, the switching controller, so we have to try to find out what's why is it not getting more voltage than that. Um, so I'm gonna switch it off again, and of course, um, when you have a non working switch mode controller, you have to be very careful because this capacitor on the primary side can hold quite quite a lot of power. Uh, we can try, I think we can measure across here. That's, yeah, see we have 270 volts here. So um, I'm going to let that discharge uh, before 
uh, poking anymore around in there. Uh, it is discharging, but it's very, very slow. So it's another sign that the sweet smoke controller is not working. It's not switching. Um, so we'll just leave it alone. Okay, let's just do a quick check if it's discharged. Yeah, we're down to 12 watts here. Um, that should be safe. So um, I think the next step is going to be to just take out the switch mode control here so you can have a closer look at it. I, I don't see anything obviously wrong on the top side here, but uh, if we need to solder on it, we need to get it out anyway because it's all going to be on the bottom. So I'll just get this board out. I don't think I'll record that because it's just loosening a few screws and so let's do that. I removed the power supply board here and I just cleaned it off a little bit. It was quite dusty. Uh, but everything looks nice. I don't see any immediate problems here. I mean there might be a bad solder joint somewhere. I can't I haven't checked it that thoroughly yet. Um, so I think it's time to uh, do a few measurements. So I think I'll I'll just try to plug it in again and just to make sure it's got nothing to do with load or anything like that um, stopping it from working so uh, it's actually quite nice enough this I don't know if you can see that but it's got all the voltages printed here uh, quite a lot of voltages on this connector over here so we can try and measure some of those uh, pin 1 and 2 should be 33 volts so let's check that see if it if it works. Okay, so it's live again and let me just try and measure over here. No, there's nothing Uh, there's definitely something is not quite right. So I think um, perhaps try to do that measurement again over here. So I'll just have to be a little bit careful probing here. Yeah. We still only have those 5.6 volts. Okay, so I think. Uh, need to have a look at the uh, resistors and the whole circuit uh, for the soft start. As a next step, I soldered in a few small wires here. Um, so we've got a black one here, ground, then we got a plus. So these will, these two will um, inject the voltage to, they're meant to inject the voltage to uh, power the switch mode controller here. And then I have one more wire here, it's um, uh, on a thermistor here, so that comes after the uh, rectifier thermistor and then it goes to uh, the primary side capacitor, so that is to inject the voltage we can use to check uh, if the switching is working. Um, so I'm just going to hook up my power supply here. So. Generally I find this this is a really nice way to check switch most power supplies because um, you don't have to be careful like when you have uh, mains connected and you will, you will be able to easily measure uh, if the switching is working, if the MOSFET is doing what it's supposed to do uh, without having to worry about uh, uh, having mains on the board and also that you don't need to have like 270 volts um, Oh, sorry, it's actually gonna be like more like maybe 320 40 volts uh, across this capacitor So let me go ahead. I'm gonna hook it up to the power supply and we'll see what happens Okay, I have it connected now, so um, I've set my bench supply to 9 volts and I limited it uh, all the way down to 50 milliamps I just want to see if uh, the switch mode controller here comes alive. So 9 volts should be enough according to the data sheet. This thing should start at 8.5 volts. Um, 
and then we can try to do some measurements, see uh, if anything is happening. So I got it at switched on now, so I think uh, we need to connect a small scope here, see if we can see what's going on. So I have identified that this small resistor over here uh, is a pull-up resistor on the base, oh sorry, on the gate of the uh, MOSFET here. So let's try that, see if anything is happening. Uh, no, we still have zero volts. Let me just try and measure here, see if we got the correct voltages across the switching controller. Oh. Yes, yeah, 8.9 volts, so it should be doing something. Uh, the switch mode, oh, sorry, the uh, bench, bench supply is saying it's consuming zero zero milliamps. Um, we can try up the voltage a little bit. It might be a little bit broader uh, case, running 9 volts. There we go, 10 volts, still nothing. 11 volts, nothing. 12 volts, nothing. 13 volts, nothing. 14, oh, something happened here. Uh, yeah, some switching started here. Uh, so it, my power supply is going into constant current mode, so I'll just up the current a little bit here. Okay, so it's 250 milliamps, so wow, now we got switching. Um, that's great. 26 kilohertz. Uh, that looks pretty good. So here we can see the trigger here. Uh, the UI on this scope meter is not exactly the best, but hey, uh, it does the job. Uh, and it's uh, isolated just in case we want to measure with the mains on. Um, that's great. So uh, let's try and measure on the secondary side here. Uh, see if we actually have some voltages coming out. They might not be all the way up to voltages, but I believe the 30 volt here is, uh, there's no regulator on it. So let's see, do we have a voltage here? Oh, there's 30 volts. Uh, that's great. Next one I think is 12, 12 volts. Yeah, 12 volts. Okay, so um, that's great. It means the MOSFET is working. It means probably the switch mode controller is okay, and it's just a problem with the startup. So uh, we can have a look, a quick look at the schematic for the startup. So I think uh, let me just uh, switch off here again. Uh, we can have a quick look at the schematic. Okay, so here we have the schematic of the power supply, and you can see the mains coming in here it goes into the. Uh, Rectifier goes through a thermistor. This is where I'm currently injected voltage at this point here, and then we have the primary side uh, capacitor here, and switch mode control over here. So uh, doing the startup, it actually takes the uh, 300 something volts here from the um, primary uh, capacitor, and it goes through three 270k resistors here. And then there's a Xeno diode, uh, let's say J20B, so probably 20 volt, maybe. Uh, uh, Xeno diode, just, just to make sure we don't get uh, the full 300 volts on this point here. And there's a capacitor that's going to get charged up. And once this capacitor has been charged, then that should supply sufficient voltage for the um, switch mode controller to start switching. And once it starts switching, then it should generate, so then it's going to go here, right? And we have our MOSFET, it's going to uh, make this whole side over here switch. And then there's a winding down here. We can see that it's going to the diode, a resistor. It's going to use the same capacitor here. 
and that's gonna power it uh, once uh, switching started. Um, so there's only really so many things that can go wrong here, right? It has to be either these three resistors, it could be something wrong with the Sina diode, could be the capacitor, maybe it's uh, leaking too much that it can't reach the voltage. Um, it doesn't look like switching started at all and I didn't see the voltage go anywhere above the 5.6 volts, so most likely this circuit over here uh, never gets activated. And this, but we can check the diode here, the resistor here. Um, so I think that's going to be the next step. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so I've been desoldering and checking components uh, over here. So the resistors look fine, the three 270K. Um, the diode looks fine. Uh, but I, when I check the capacitors, so, so this is the one that's getting charged up. Uh, allowing the uh, uh, switch mode controller to uh, to start and if we just insert it here and do a test uh, so I believe yeah it's a 47 microfarad uh, rated at 50 volt and it comes out of 41 microfarad and that's kind of okay but an ESR of 10 ohm um, that sounds uh, very high and we also have another one here this is a one microfarad uh, I believe also rated at 50 volts uh, it's used for uh, internally by the switch mode controller something they call uh, soft start uh, just try to test that one as well yeah becomes okay one microfarad here but um, ESR 5 ohm uh, it sounds very high uh, we can comparably see so I have some I don't have any 47 microfarad at 50 volt I have some 100 microfarad I think that will be fine I, it might take a little bit longer to start but uh, I believe it should be okay uh, if we try check one of those here So here you can see the, well it comes up at 103 microfarad and the ESI is like 200 uh, milliohms, so that's very different from 10 ohms from the other one. And uh, for the 1 microfarad, I don't have an electrolytic 1 microfarad rated for uh, 50 volt either, uh, but I do have a, a film capacitor, uh, I think that should fit in there. So let's try that. Ah, that will probably be a lot lower ESR, but um, yeah, one microfarad ESR is, is probably a lot less than this, but um, I will try solder those in and we'll give it a test again and see if it uh, fixes the board here. Okay, so um, I'm ready to hook up the mains again. So I just got a meter here, it's uh, connected across um, the same wires as before uh, with the uh, power supply of the switching controller here. Um, just discharge it, but you can see the, there's a little bit of voltage on the capacitor there. Anyway, um, I'll try to connect the mains again and we'll see what happens. Okay, so now we have 10 volts here, uh, that's looking a lot better. Um, so I think we should try measure some uh, voltages on the secondary side here and see if we get anything useful. So I just get one more meter here. I hope you can see that. Um, let me try to do a quick measurement here. A little bit hard to get my fingers in there. Yeah, 
Yeah, so now it's switching again. We can see now we got the 30 volts on the secondary here on pin 1 and 2. So uh, it actually looks like everything is, is working again. And of course with the 10, 10 volt here instead of 5 volts. So it all indicates that it was just a bad couple of capacitors uh, that was preventing the switch mode controller from starting up. Okay, so I'll just let um, switch it off again and let it discharge and then we can see if it works in the DVD player. Okay, so since the... well I'll let it discharge here, but since these capacitors were so bad and um, they are definitely not quality capacitors, Capson, yeah, is a pretty bad brand. This one something I think also caps and maybe something else uh, but definitely um, Samsung uh, didn't put uh, quality capacitors in this product so uh, I think we should just take the ESR and a couple more um, just just to make sure it's not a general problem uh, let's try the primary side capacitor so I let it discharge already it's it looks like it's less than it's like 130 milliohm. That looks okay. Um, let's check some on the secondary side. It looks like these are the two big ones here. Yeah, 50 50 milliohm looks okay. This one going down. 80, 70, looks okay. Got one over here. 200 milliohm, still probably okay. Over here, 200 milliohm. Got a couple of smaller ones over here. Hundred million, a bit high. Uh, about one ohm, but it looks like this is. Can't really see what value it is, but uh, these are fairly small capacitors, so a bit higher here. So got one here as well. Two hundred million. So I, I would say these probably okay. Um, and for some reason there was just the two over here um, or maybe it was only one of them but anyway um, those were bad so um, time to install the power supply back in the DVD player and see if everything uh, powers up got the power supply mount, mounted here again uh, everything is connected up and it's time to try uh, connect the mains and see what happens. So here we go. Uh, so far nothing happens. I can't see the display but let me try the power button. There's a sound, it sounds awful. Oh, it starts spinning. Something is happening. definitely moving ahead but it sounds like something needs some cleaning there can't focus okay let's switch it off again but that definitely sounds like the unit is powered on now okay I'll just cut the mains uh, so I think I uh, need to take the mechanical drive apart here and see if it needs a little bit of lubrication or cleaning. It's uh, quite dirty. <laughs> Don't know where that's coming from. Uh, but it sounds it sounds pretty awful. Uh, so I hope none of the plastic gears are broken. I hope the laser unit is okay. But hey, we'll take a look. If not, at least we know the power supply is working now.